Hello everyone, so this is lecture 25 of our subject digital system design and the topic for today's lecture is logic families, their characteristics and then we will be covering the first logic family that is the TTL logic family. So these are the contents, first we will be discussing the introduction, what are these logic families, then we will be covering the performance characteristics of the logic families which will be generalized for all logic families and then the first logic family that is the TTL logic family, transistor, transistor logic, this is the first logic family which we will be covering. So, it is the introduction to the logic families, the by logic family we mean that all the circuits can be classified, all the circuits whichever we have studied so far like AND gates, OR gates, these gates, the internal structure of these logic gates is composed of some analog circuits like resistors, diodes, transistors. So, whatever the different types of components which are being used in the internal circuit, they make a separate logic family. So, the logic families can be classified broadly according to the technology they are built within. So, whatever the structure is offered inside the gate, it becomes the basis of that logic family. So, it, there is a RTL logic family in which we see that mainly there are resistors and transistor inside the gates. Then we see DTL in that the major components are diode and transistors, resistors will be there, but diodes are diode are introduced into the RTL structure. Okay, so, RTL became DT, DTL. Then emitter coupled logic in which there will be transistors and their emitters will be coupled to generate the outputs. Then TTL transistor transistor logic mainly all the components will be the transistors <coughs> and then CMOS which will be having MOSFETs, CMOS stands for complementary metal oxide semiconductor which will be having MOSFETs, MOSFETs we have covered in our analog related subjects which are field effect transistors, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. So, there will be P type MOSFETs and N type MOSFET and together they will be making CMOS. Okay. So, out of these logic family TT and CMOS logic family are most widely used technologies and ECL is also used, ECL is the fastest logic family we will be covering that. So, these are the three logic families which we will be covering in detail ECL, TTL and CMOS. So, we will start with TTL, but before going to that TTL, we will be studying their characteristics. And further to add to this, within each family there are several sub families of the logic types that are available with different rating for speed, power consumption that means TTL will be having different low power TTL, low power scope key TTL, high speed. So, there will be different variants in further the logic family that means all logic families can be subdivided further into sub logic families depending on their characteristics like speed, power consumption, temperature range, voltage level, current level all these things. Okay. So, this is a basic introduction of the logic families. Now, let us start with the performance characteristics of logic families. So, there are some characteristics which will decide the what, how sorry, how the logic family is going to be operated and in which kind of application it will be better to use that particular logic family. So, these are some voltage related characteristics VOH in this, this O stands for output, H stands for high. Similarly, O stands for output, L stands for low, I stands for input, H stands for high, I stands for input, L stands for low. So, this is basically discussing about the voltage levels at the output, VOH means voltage level at the output, H stands for high. That means, what should be the minimum level of the voltage that can be considered as a high output. Okay. So, this is VOH. Similarly, VOH corresponding to VOH, there will be VOL. What will be the maximum value of the voltage which can be considered as a 0 or a low? So, th these are VOH and VOL. So, th this same thing can be termed for inputs as well. So, VIH minimum that means whatever voltage you will be applying at the input side, it has to be minimum crossing that level so that it can be considered high. So, this VIH means minimum voltage level applied at the input side for high signal input. Okay. Similarly, VIL max 
that means maximum value of the voltage input that can be considered as a low input okay so these are the four voltages so these are mentioned here vol vil voh vih o stands for output l stands for low i stands for input l stands for low o stands for output h stands for high similarly i stands for input h stands for high so output to input transition these voltage are denoted here similarly output to input for high voltage high signal level they are denoted in form of a figure x okay so now let's cover the and this you can also see that this is a nand gate okay this is a nand gate and nand gates both input are combined together and given a high input so definitely my output is going to be low okay similarly here here the input is zero that means low so output must be high so these are the two cases discussed for low and high okay and the same thing applies for these not gates the output of these nand gates are applied to the input of these not gates okay so this is the voltage related parameters of the logic family similarly there are current related parameters which are mentioned here i o l i i l i o h i i h so let's cover them as well so i o h is the current flowing into an output so this thing is common to all current flowing into an output current flowing into an output current flowing into an input current flowing into an input so o o i and i okay so current flowing into an output first two terms are for output and then two terms are for input okay so current flowing into an output in the logic one state because we are discussing about this high and similarly in the logic zero state because we are considering low similarly when a specific high level because h is there and specified low level when l is there and the same thing low and high terms are uh, discussed again because we have applied a high input here and this is nand gate acting as not gate so output will be low so for this low case what will be the currents this will be i o l and this will be i i l okay similarly this is i o h and i i h because input is zero output will be high okay so these are the voltage and current related characteristics then let's come to the other most important characteristics which are fan in and fan out okay this this fan in and fan out both are related to the number of inputs and number of output maximum number of inputs and maximum number of outputs which can be accepted by a logic gate and which this is for fan in the number of inputs that the gate can handle properly without disturbing the output level so if an and gate is of two inputs then can we increase it to three can we increase it to four input and gate so what is the maximum limit of the number of input that can be accepted by that and gate will be the fan in okay similarly this fan out so fan out means the output of that and gate can be connected to how many loads okay by load we mean other gates so the output of one of the gate can be connected to how many further input of other gates so those gates are considered as load okay so a logic circuit output is generally required to derive multiple logic inputs as we have seen in the various circuits which we have designed so far in which output of one of the gate is entering the input of multiple other gates so it is required to derive multiple logic inputs sometime all ics are from the same logic family but maybe system have mix of logic families but in all the scenario the fan out which is also called as a loading factor it is the maximum number of logic inputs that output can derive reliably so that means what is the maximum number of other gates that can be driven by the output of one of the logic gates okay so this is fan in and fan out so no need to say that the maximum 
higher the value of these fan in and fan out better it will be for us for preparing complex and large circuits okay so power dissipation power required by the logic circuit for desired operation so while performing the operation whichever we have assigned it in form of functional like and gate and operation or operation so what is the power consumed by the circuit itself while it is giving a particular output for a given input okay so this is power dissipation need not to say that power dissipation should be as minimum as possible for a better performance then figure of merit so this figure of merit as the name suggest that value will be deciding what is the merit level of that gate what is the merit level of that logic family okay so it is power delay product figure of merit is a power delay product which is in the form of pico joule so should be as high as possible and it is equal to propagation delay time nanosecond into milliwatt okay so propagation delay time the delay offered by the gate and into power milliwatt so should be as high as possible for better performance okay so let's come to the next characteristic propagation delay <coughs> this we have covered briefly in the previous figure of merit definition so let's come to the details of this propagation delay so a logic signal always experiences a delay going through the circuit the propagation delay times are defined as whenever we are applying a input let's say we have applied the a not gate is there okay a not gate is there we have applied a zero and we will be getting one so this for this zero which we have applied okay for this zero we have applied we will be getting one but this one will not be instantaneous it will be after some certain delay let's say something like this okay so it will be shifted by some space okay so there are two types of propagation delays first one is delay time in going from logic 0 to logic 1 0 to 1 low to high state and similarly delay time in going from logic 1 to 0 high to low so this is low to high and this is high to low so this time which has been taken okay or we can mention it from the center points okay so if we mark these from the center points of the input and output then it can be shown as bit from this point to this point this duration will be termed as the propagation delay while going from high to low similarly between this point and this point this will be propagation delay while going from low to high okay so these midpoints are actually the 50% levels of the maximum value so if we find if you are interested in finding the overall propagation delay then we can average these two propagation delays propagation from high to low propagation delay from low to high so both are averaged out that means sum divided by 2 it will be giving me average propagation delay okay so this is the propagation delay of a logic family then coming to the noise related characteristics so noise come into effect due to the stray electric or magnetic field and they can induce separate voltages on the connecting wires between the logic circuits and these fresh voltages which are being added are termed as noise okay so noise emitter refers to the circuit's ability to tolerate noise without changes in the output voltage that means how how much efficient is my circuit so that it can deal effectively with the these spurious noise signals whether it, the circuit is able to compensate for these noises or not so a quantitative measure is called noise margin that means that much of noise i can accommodate 
if that much of noise is there my circuit can still work satisfactorily. So, this is noise margin. So, again this noise margin will be separate for high and low signals. So, which are shown here noise margin for high that means V O H min minus V I H min V O H and V I H min these two signals we have already covered in the voltage related performance characteristics V O H O H stands for output voltage for high signal and input voltage for high signal. So, I O H and I H. So, this is O H and this is I H. So, this this is the input side and this is the output side and these are the voltages corresponding to high level. So, this is V O H and this is V I H. So, difference between the two is termed as noise margin for high state. Similarly, V N L low state noise margin v, it will be equal to V I L max V I L max I L max means input side low voltage and similarly output side low voltage. So, this is again input side and these are the voltages level for low level. So, this is V O L this is V I L. So, subtracting the two V I L minus V O L will be giving me V N L. So, these are the two noise margins which are separate for both high and low states. Okay. So, these are the performance characteristics of our logic family. Now, let us come to the first logic family of ours which we will be covering in detail TTL transistor transistor logic these logic family uses a 5 volt supply okay. and it can vary between plus minus 0.25 that means 4.75 to 5.25 you can use. So, this is the supply and these are capable of high speed operation over 600 different logic ICs are available that means it is the most commonly used logic family. So, almost 600 ICs are available in this TTL logic family which can perform different operations like gate related operations, multiplexer related operations, adding re adder related operations and so on. Okay. So, NAND and NOR gates sorry NAND and AND gates use multiple emitter transistors or multiple diode junction input that will be taking into account in the next circuit when we will be discussing and NOR and OR gates use separate input transistors. Okay. So, it is trying to say that if we are preparing NAND and AND gates then we need not to choose multiple transistors for multiple inputs only the emitters will be multiple that means in a single transistor if I want to have 3 inputs then I will be using 3 emitters on that single transistor. Okay. But in case of a NOR and OR gate if I have to prepare 3 input NOR gate then I have to use 3 separate transistors. So, this is this, these points are saying the input will be the cathode of the PN junction it is very much clear to us. So, transistor that means transistor which we are going to use will be NPN transistor that means emitters and this will be collector and this will be base. So, we are going to apply inputs on the emitter side which is of n type that is why it is said the input will be the cathode of a p n junction that means if this is n this is p this is a diode light related structure. So, n is termed as the cathode of that structure. Okay. Then a high input will turn off the junction that means it is very much clear <coughs> because on the n side on the n side which is termed as a cathode if we are applying a high signal it will reverse bias that junction and in that case only leakage current will be generated that means it will be turned off kind of thing. And similarly a low input if we are applying a low input to the n side that means cathode is given low value it makes an arrangement for the forward bias. Okay. So, in that case relatively large current is generated so we can say that transistor is conducting. Okay. So, most transistor most retail circuits have some type of totem pole output configuration totem pole output configuration is something like this that there will be two diodes. Okay. And in between I will be taking the output. So, these side of these type of arrangements are termed as totem pole arrangements. So, <coughs> such arrangements are used so that either either the upper diode is working or the lower diode is working. So, that I am able to satisfactorily 
maintain the isolation between VCC and ground. So, there will be no confusion either if this diode is working then I will be getting a high output and if this diode is working then I will be getting a low output. Okay. So, let us start with the actual circuit. So, this is the actual circuit of the TTL NAND gate. In this you can see that there is a multi emitter transistor that means, I am preparing a two input NAND gate A B Y 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So, these four set of values can be applied at these two inputs A and B that means, these are the multiple emitters of this single transistor Q 1 okay. and the output of this collector output of this transistor is fed to the base of this Q 2 transistor and then the collector output of this Q 2 is fed to the base of Q 3 emitter output of this Q 2 is fed to the base of Q 4. So, if Q 3 conducts, if Q 3 conducts my output will be connected to VCC. And if Q 4 conducts, then my output will be connected to. So, if Q 3 conducts my output will be connected to VCC and if Q 4 conducts my output will be connected to ground. Okay. So, now we have to see if we apply which input condition to generate which particular output and before going to that this multi emitter transistor can be broken into diode like structure in this way. You can check that this is same resistor R 1 R 1 here this is the Q 2 transistor this is Q 2 transistor. So, this section is broken into because this is n type emitter n type emitter p type base and then n type collector. So, this thing can be termed as a p n diode. So, this is p n and this can be considered as n p n p 2 n p diodes. So, n p n p diode connected in opposite direction. Okay. So, this is the diode based replacement of this multi emitter transistor. Okay. Now, let us see whether we which thing generates which output. Okay. So, now I will not be using this multi emitter transistor, I am using this diode arrangement. So, let us check this circuit. So, I have replaced this transistor by this diode arrangement now. Okay. Now, let us apply both high inputs. So, both high inputs are there that means high and high and this you can check that high voltage is applied at the n part of the diode that means it will be reverse bias. So, it will be reverse bias that means it will be off, it will be off and all this supply voltage is entering the this diode this plus is reaching the p part that means it will be conducting. So, we can actually it was a transistor. Okay. So, we can specially mention here if a transistor conducts transistor conducts then emitter potential will be high. Okay. And if transistor does not conduct, if transistor does not conduct, then collector potential will be high. Okay. So, these are the emitters. So, these transistors, this transistor is actually off because these inputs are not being accepted by the n type emitter. Okay. So, this is a reverse bias. So, this transistor is actually of Q 1 transistor was the my Q 1 transistor. So, Q 1 transistor is of that means emitter potentials are low. So, emitters are not conducting emitter junctions are not conducting, but the collector junction is conducting. So, collector potential is high. Now, this collector potential is high that means this will cause this if this collector potential is high then this high potential is connected to the 
P type base of this transistor Q2 that means this Q2 transistor will be on. Now, if, if this Q2 transistor is on then we have already seen that if transistor is on that means it is conducting then emitter potential will be high that means if it is on then this will be high and again you can see this high is connected to the P type base that means it will also be on. Similarly, if this is conducting this is Q2 is conducting it is on then collector potential must be low and this low is connected to the P type base. So, this must be off. So, you can see that there is no VCC connection between the output and the VCC, but a ground connection has been prepared. So, we can see that if we are giving 0 sorry if we are giving A B as 1 0 0 1 or 1 1 A and B are both high sorry if both are high then this situation will be there that means if both are high then this situation is arising in which we can see that output is low which is perfect working of a NAND gate. Okay. So, if both the inputs are high then this is the situation. Now, let us cover the other cases. So, in other cases if any of the input is high sorry low. So, if A B 0 0 0 1 and 1 0. So, if any of the three possibilities are there okay, that means that means minimum a single input is low. Okay. So, if this is low then low is connected to the n type of n part of the diode that means it will be on, but it is considered high. So, it will be off. So, now if it is conducting that means this transistor Q 1 is conducting. Now, if transistor is conducting we have seen that its, m, its collector potential its collector potential will be low this low is connected to the P type base of this Q 2 transistor. Now, this will be off if it is off then emitter potential will be low and collector potential will be high. So, if collector potential is high this P type will be connected to high and this P type will be connected to low. So, that means this will be on and this will be off. So, we can see that now the connection is VCC to this X terminal or the output terminal and this connection has been broken that means in all these cases my output is going to be high. So, summarizing we can see that 0 0 0 1 1 0. So, for these three cases we have seen that output is high and for 1 1 my output is low. So, this is the perfect operation of a TTL NAND gate. Okay. So, this is the perfect operation of a TTL NAND gate. Okay. So, in this way we can design other gates as well because NAND gate is prepared NAND is a universal gate and we can design all other gates using that universal gate concept that means other gates can also be designed. So, these are the characteristics based on bipolar junction transistor one of the most widely used families for small and medium scale di devices 5 volt supply is required noise immunity is 1 to 1.6 volt, then many forms some optimized for speed, some optimized for power that means many sub families of TTLs, TTL are also available. High speed versions comparable to CMOS, CMOS is slightly faster normal version of CMOS is faster than the TTL, but some high speed versions of TTL are also available which are comparable to the CMOS related gates. So, low power version down to about 1 milliwatt. So, low power consumption up to as low as 1 milliwatt per gate are also available in this TTL. So, these are the basic characteristics of TTL. So, with this we come to the end of today's lecture. Thank you very much.